Guess what time of the year it is. So this is all the grapes this year. Everything else I missed, I kind of slacked. I have a whole other batch that I'm going to do a video about here in a little bit as well. But uh, what I got here is probably three, maybe four cups of grapes, unblended. I'm uh, going to blend them up. That's probably good. All right, so about two cups of the mash. So I think what's going to end up happening here, <clears throat> from what I gathered on the recipe, I'm going to from the one recipe I saw it said I can go one to one to one with sugar, water, and grapes. So. If I add two cups of sugar and then go like three or four cups of water, that's pretty much the most I'm going to be able to get out of this batch, which honestly, this is about the same size as the first batch from last year, the very first batch of wine. Uh, so we're going to see what this looks like in just a moment. All right, so I've decided I'm going to do four cups of water because it was four cups of whole grapes before it was pureed. All right, we've got all of that juice out of there. Rinse this guy a little bit and see if I can't get a little bit more in. All right, so this is going to be like two more cups. It doesn't seem like much. It's a small batch in a big bucket. So now I got to get sugar in there. Honestly, I think this will probably use a lot more water than that. Yeah. All right. Teensy, teensy bit of grape juice still in the, the glass here. Give it a blue tinge. All right. So we're probably about 10 cups of water here. I'm going to think I'm going to go about four cups of sugar. We'll see here. Are you ready, kids? Look at all that sugar. That is... Four cups. All right, I just tasted it and uh, it needs more water. There's four more cups. We're gonna call that good. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the yeast starter. And this should be good to go within about a week. All right, this is one packet of Red Star dry active yeast. Expires 2006. It'll work. So uh, we're going to let this sit. Five or ten minutes here. It's going to start bubbling up. Once it does that, then uh, stir it around and toss it in. So I'll be back. Okay, so this has been sitting for about 10, 15 minutes. And it isn't doing a lot, but it is. You see these little bubbles when I stir it. Those are carbon dioxide. Pretty much all of it. Okay. Okay, so now that that's in, I'm going to stir this incessantly here for a bit. This is to get as much oxygen into it as possible.
And uh, each day I'm going to stir this once or twice a day in such a way for the first three days. And then the recipe says after that I should strain it out. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that because this is a macerated wine. But uh, somewhere about the 7 to 10 day mark I probably will. And once it's been strained and filtered and it will be allowed to ferment for another several days. And uh, once I decide it's okay, I will uh, bottle it up and pasteurize it. You can see all them bubbles. Oh, it's starting to foam. Sugar is completely dissolved in this water. All oh, that foam, all those bubbles, that is all caused by the fermentation. So we're already starting. All right, this is the back corner. That is the deepest wall of the house. Same back wall as where I make my other videos. This is the thermally, the most thermally stable room in the house. What I got here is this tube coming out the top of the bucket. Top is clicked down, a uh, small hole. The tube goes through, it's pretty well airtight. Certainly no bugs gonna get in there. Then we got the tube running all the way to this. So we got water. This is like a cereal container, dry goods storage. It's been taped shut. And to help keep the cats away from messing with it, it's going to go in here first. Oh. Like so. And this is going to go in next to it. And there it will sit until I stir it and check on it. Once that tube, once this gets going, that tube's going to have bubbles coming out of it into the water. And once the bubbles stop, that's when it's done fermenting. 